It is spring in the Jura Mountains of Switzerland. Cows casually graze along the foothills, supplying the milk that is used to make some of the famous local cheeses. But this is not the only dairy industry in these hills. The sprawling Formica Rufa Empire that we met in episode 4 is bustling again after long months of hibernation. The hills are covered with hundreds of thousands of these wood ants, all busy repairing the damage their fortress has suffered during the winter months. During this time of the year, the colossal size of this colony becomes visible as the forest floor turns black under a thick living mantle of moving ants numbering in the hundreds of thousands. Keeping such a vast empire running requires obtaining an enormous amount of food every single day to keep the countless worker ants and insatiable larvae fed. What can an empire of this size do to find enough calories to feed its masses? Like the Campanotus ants from the wooden fortress we met in episode 3, they are opportunists and forage for food in their surroundings. But these Formica ants are not as specialized in foraging as the Campanotus carpenter ants and don't travel as far in their search for food. This means that they have to feed a much larger colony from sources closer to their nest. Like the Asian marauder ants we saw in episode 6, they also hunt for prey. But they haven't developed specialized hunting techniques like their swarm raiding cousins from the Far East. Their home forest is a living storehouse of biomass full of nutrients. But ants cannot digest most of the plant material around them, so they need other ways to access these rich stores of nutrients to keep their colony alive. These wood ants may not be able to build up a long distance supply chain and are not specialist hunters, but they have a secret way to produce a steady source of food to feed their innumerable masses of worker ants. The conifer trees surrounding the colony's nest seem inconspicuous from afar, but a closer look reveals that one or more of them have a highway on their trunk where thousands of ants travel up and down. Looking even closer reveals part of their secret. The ants traveling up look different to the ones coming down. While the upward travelers look normal, the returning ants are bloated to the bursting. Their rear end, called the gaster, is stretched so much that the skin has become almost transparent. Inside is a clear liquid. This sticky liquid full of carbohydrates is the secret fuel that keeps this vast colony running. It is the energy drink of the insect world that power the workers through their day. But where does this secret miraculous liquid come from? The ants' digestive system doesn't allow them to access the energy from the trees directly. The ants have an astonishing solution to this problem that humans, like the dairy farmers in the foothills, have since copied. These ants keep their own livestock and establish an enormous dairy industry to feed their empire. Up in the higher branches of these conifer trees, they keep large herds of animals that can convert the biomass that is indigestible to ants into a sweet nectar called honeydew that the ants can feast on. The livestock these ants keep are aphids, sometimes those are called ant cows because of their role as dairy producers for ants. Our ants keep them in great numbers, carry them around the trees to find the best branches for the aphids to feast on. The ants protect them from predators and carry them to safety when weather conditions become precarious. The aphids flourish under the tender care of their ants. In return, the aphids that feed on sap from the tree secrete their excess intake as the sugar-rich and sticky honeydew the ants love. Both sides benefit from this symbiotic relationship. 
The ants milk their cattle by tapping their antennas on the aphids' abdomens, which stimulates the secretion of honeydew. The milking ant sucks up the secreted droplets until they are filled to bloating. This is the time to leave the tree and return to the nest. Many ant species have a social stomach that allows them to store liquid food in their gaster, which they can later share with other ants. Our dairy farmer ants are using this ability to carry the collected honeydew in great quantities back to the nest to feed workers engaged in other tasks. This astonishing dairy industry offers a steady source of carbohydrates that allows this species to produce such large colonies. Formica rufa are not the only dairy farming ants, but few other species do it on such a large scale. Keeping livestock and establishing a dairy industry is not the only way to extract nutrients that are indigestible to ants from their surroundings. Some species in North and South America have found other ways of farming that offer even greater yield, allowing these colonies to grow even larger in size than our Swiss wood ants. In the next episode of our Hidden Empires documentary series, we will focus on a truly specialist farming ant species. Stay tuned to meet the Atta tribe, also known as the leaf cutters. Subscribe to our channel to make sure you won't miss our next episode and hit the bell icon if you want to see more videos like this. Besides the documentary series, we upload videos about ant keeping and regular vlogs about ants in general. Follow us to learn more about these amazing creatures.